want to have an outline over an interactable object like this, you're in the right place. So let's get to it. In order to do that, uh, we can use the first person template. So uh, you need to make a new project if you don't have uh, one open already and uh, open the first person template. And in it, uh, we can trace for interactable items first, right? So in order to do that, we need to go to project settings and in collision, we can add an interactable type. So you want to go new object channel and say interactable. Uh, sorry for my spelling, uh, it's probably wrong. So now we can make a new actor, which is uh, the interactable. In the blueprints folder, I'm just going to go right click blueprint class, say actor, I'm going to call that item. So, and our item is just going to have a static mesh, uh, and we're going to want to draw the outline over that, right? So I'm just going to select a cube, and what's going to do a trick for me here is I'm, I'm going to search for tag and add an outline tag. Uh, this is going to help us find, so this means that in every item that you want to draw the outline in, you need to tag something, like you need to tag a mesh with outline in order for, for our thing to find the right mesh to draw the outline on. Right. Let's put our box in the level. And now we need to trace for it. And I prefer to use a sphere trace for this because it gives you a more like definite more definite response rather than a line, tra line trace when you have multiple objects. So uh, in our first person character, we can get the tick event to trace every frame. Right? So draw uh, drag that out and then release it and go sphere trace for objects and our object is going to be the interactable we created so we can drag that out make array and over here we're going to see interactable so we're going to look for that type of object uh, and this uh, you know for this to actually get something at the end of that we need to say that our item is an interactable and the the where you do that is in collision so if you search for collision in collision presets you can set that to custom and specify the object type which in our case is interactable okay now we want to trace like roughly we want to trace in front of the camera sort of over here in order in order to do that we need to have um, a range which is going to be a float and a radius, which is, is, is going to be the, like, a small radius would be like this, and a, small, a large radius would be like this. Uh, so, and the radius is going to go in over here. Let me drag out the range as well. Now, how are we going to use the range? Okay, so we need the camera. So, over here, find the first person camera, drag it out can get its um, location and we need the world location for that and that's going to be the start of our trace and then the end of the trace is going to be um, or actually let me check uh, yeah okay the end of the trace is going to be in the direction where the camera is facing so that means we need the forward vector and to get a point in front of that, we need to just multiply the direction with the range. And to get the actual point, we need to sum the location of the camera with the, with the result of that multiplication and stick that in the end of the tra sphere trace for objects. Now let's draw that um, to see if we're actually finding something. Well, what's going on? Draw for one frame. Well, uh, our range is zero, so we need to actually like, have our range and have a radius. 
Now we see, oh, there we go. Red means nothing's found, and green means we got the box. Okay. Now, uh, we need to actually draw something around that box, right? So, after the trace, you can drag the bool out to get a branch from it. And what we need to do is we need to keep track of what we're tracing, right? So, we need to make this out hit into a variable. So, promote that to a variable and call it interactable. And the idea is that you want to trace uh, for, uh, draw the outline around the stuff that you're tracing and remove it from everything else that you're not tracing, right? So if you're moving to, if, you, if you've, this is just to avoid having a situation like this where you've been looking at one thing, then you start looking at another thing, but the outline is still, still on the old thing, right? So you just, you're going to have to remove it, right? So in order to do that, we need to get a couple of functions here. And one of them is going to be start tracing and um, the other is going to be stop tracing. Okay. Um, and the start tracing is going to have uh, a couple of parameters, which is a new actor, and that's going to be actor, and an, an old actor. Okay. So uh, the idea is when we start the, the new trace, draw the outline around the new actor and uh, undraw it on the old actor, right? And um, so how we're going to do that is we're going to get that mesh that we tagged with outline. So from the new actor, we're going to drag this out and we're going to type get component by tag. And this is going to get all the components. So we need to get the a primitive component on the component class and the tag is going to be outline. Get the first one. Get. And on the first one, all we have to do is just call uh, set render custom depth and set it to true. So true is going to mean outline, and false is going to mean no outline for that mesh. So we want to draw it on the new actor, and we want to get rid of it on the old actor if there is one. And if there is one, how we can check that is if we drag that out and say um, equals equals object. Uh, so equals equals select asset means it's going to check if it's equal to nothing. And we want to branch out of that and say if it's not equal to nothing or uh, you just do the same thing for the old actor so get the primitive component with class outline get the first one and if the old actor is not the uh, is not null then we uh, do the same thing set render custom depth, but this time it's going to be false because we want to get rid of the outline, right? Uh, so in order to test that, we need to actually, we need to add a post-process volume, which is going to do the, which is going to contain the material for the outline. So just get a post-process volume here, search for post, uh, and then drag it out in the world. Uh, you need to, in the details here, you need to search for uh, unbound first because we don't want to be in the, we, uh, you want to draw, draw the outline anywhere in the world, not just inside this little post-process volume. Uh, so, and then what you want to find is blendables and they are going to be in rendering features, post-process materials, this array. So you want to add an element choose asset reference and then that asset reference is going to be a material now here's the material we're going to use uh, we're going to use this excellent article by Pavel Minishevsky which is uh, he basically makes a material that uses edge detection to draw this outline that we're looking for right and he explains how he does everything 
But luckily, we don't have to do all this complicated material stuff. We can just download his sample project and use his materials. Right. So check that out. It's in the description. Download the sample project. And once you've downloaded it, you're going to see that there in the content folders, uh, there's going to be a materials folder and those materials we are interested in, right? So if you select those, you can safely copy them to your project by going right click asset actions migrate, click OK, then navigate to your project um, that you created and get the phone, the content folder and click select. Now I, I've already done this so it's asking me to replace them but you're not going to get that uh, uh, prompt. So, and when you click OK, you're going to find a material folder in your project which has everything we need. And in particular, we need this PP Outliner inst. And you're going to see a parameter here which you can use to set your color. Uh, you can use anything you like. I'm going to use white. So, that PP Outliner inst needs to go into the post process blendable materials. So, click here. Uh, on the element you just created and say uh, pp uh, outliner inst okay there we go now let's let's add another cubed test that uh, so that outline thing we spoke about earlier and nothing is happening uh, okay right well that's because we're not calling any of these start tracing functions. Okay, so let me just check my reference here. Um, okay, so if we're tracing something, we want us to call the... Uh, we want to see if we're tracing something different. So um, the out hit, if I drag this out, I can break, break the hit result. Then I can also break the interactable that we haven't set yet, but we're going to use that. So split that. And I want to check if this actor, if the old actor that we're tracing is equal to the new actor that we're tracing. And if that's... Um, so if we're tracing something new, I want to call the start tracing function. Uh, so let's get a branch out of that and uh, so if the old one is equal to the new one I don't want to do anything but, but if, they're, if they're not equal I want to call start tracing um, and then stick the new actor from the break result from the trace and the old actor from the interactable hit result variable right that we made earlier um, now this is probably not the most efficient but it's gonna work trust me okay uh, what else do we have to do and then after that we want to set that uh, hit result variable on true and on false uh, from from this branch, and then let's see if that works. There we see. Okay, we have an outline around this because we're tracing it. But if we start tracing something new, we uh, get rid of the old one, right? And then draw the new outline. But if I stop tracing, like if I look into the nothing. This thing keeps, uh, like, is outlined, and I don't want that. Okay, so in order to get rid of the outline where we're not looking at an interactable, we want to use the stop tracing function over here, right? So just drag it out over here, and then um, if, if this thing doesn't find anything, I want to stop tracing once. So, uh, oh, wait. Uh, do once stop tracing and then uh, what's going to reset that is just plug that into the reset button right so 
and we need to implement the stop tracing thing. So we can grab the interactable, split it, then get the actor, right? So if there is one, uh, well, wait. Um, so if the interactable thing is not equal, oh, if there is one, right? Uh, and how do we check if there is one? Um, let me see. I can check my reference. Uh, okay, so we split that, and if the actor is equal to nothing, um, we don't want to. You know, we we don't want to do anything, but. Um, Oh wait, uh, if the actor is equal to nothing, then we want to, uh, uh, okay, if the actor is equal to nothing, we don't do anything, but it's, if it's not equal to nothing, uh, we want to set, uh, we want to get the um, component with the outline tag. So get a primitive component. Uh, with the outline tag, and that's going to return an array. So we need to get the first one and undraw the outline from that. So that's going to happen by set ren render custom depth to nothing. So, so the depth is going to be false. We need to set the that variable to null after we do that because the function is called stop tracing. Okay. A nice way to do that is just like from stop tracing from the beginning, just drag it out and go look for a sequence. And the first part of the sequence is going to be that um, undraw the outline thing, and then the second part is going to be set interactable to nothing. Right. And that should work. Oh, okay, it's my sphere radius that's too big. Oh my god, okay, it works.